Hello, thanks for tuning in. If you're new, my name is Rahul Demania. I absolutely love teaching for the USMLE Step 1 exam. This is a brief snippet of my upcoming rap review course. Today we're going to be covering biochemistry, and I'm specifically going to be going through the various chromosomes that you need to know for your USMLE exam. We're going to go in numerical order so we don't miss anything, but what I do want you to also burn into your mind are the clinical correlates. And the clinical correlates, I'm going to highlight how they are going to test them. Chromosome number three is going to be related to von Hippel-Lindau syndrome as well as renal cell carcinoma. You can think of renal cell carcinoma, RCC, having three letters, so that's going to be chromosome number three. Von Hippel-Lindau syndrome is going to be related to very vascular tumors. So renal cell carcinoma is going to be one of them. Hemangioblastomas of the cerebellum is going to be another uh, tumor related to von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. Chromosome number four is going to be related to autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. This is going to present in a adult or teenager, and this patient is not only going to have multiple cysts on the kidney, but they're going to have hypertension. They may even have the berry aneurysms and can present with cerebral um, hemorrhage. So just keep those uh, presentations in mind. Achondroplasia is also going to be related to chromosome number four. Just think of having four short arms and achondroplasia, remember, is going to be the most common cause of dwarfism. These patients are going to have normal lifespan and normal intellectual capability as well. Huntington's disease, this is going to be also related to chromosome number four. Huntington's disease, the classic presentation is going to be a 40-year-old patient and they're going to have those writhing, choreoathetoid, dancing-like movements. These patients can also be a little bit more aggressive or have inappropriate laughter. I've seen some USMLA questions in which they are going to make it seem as if we're going down the psychosis route or even like the ingestion route, but that choreoathetoid movement usually uh, gives it away. And remember that this is related to those CAG repeats and uh, that trinucleotide uh, repeat is very high yield for you to know. Chromosome number five is related to familial adenomatous polyposis. This is going to be a mutation in the APC gene, so FAP and then APC. You see this presentation typically when the uh, uh, patient is going for a colonoscopy and the um, GI specialist sees thousands of colop colonic polyps, and these patients have a very high likelihood of developing colonic carcinoma, and so the management of this could be um, phrased on your exam as prophylactic colectomy. Chromosome number six is related to the HFE gene. HFE gene is going to be related to your hereditary hemochromatosis. This is going to be a state of iron overload. These patients are going to present with tanning of the skin. They are going to have issues with um, their libido because the iron can deposit in their testes. They also are going to have abnormalities in their ASD and ALT and elevated blood sugars. And that's why these patients are going to have elevations in their um, hemoglobin A1C that you can see on your exam. Chromosome number seven is going to be related to cystic fibrosis. Now remember, cystic fibrosis has a multi-system um, disease involvement. The two or three that I want to highlight for you are going to be the lung manifestations. So these patients can develop bronchiectasis, for example. They're going to have colonization from organisms such as Burkholderia, Pseudomonas. These patients also can have endocrine and exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. Remember that they are unable to actually reabsorb their fat-soluble vitamins. And finally, remember that these patients are going to be diagnosed with a positive sweat chloride test, or you can actually test the mutations on chromosome number seven. The most common mutation is going to be the delta F508, which encodes for a phenylalanine deletion. Chromosome number nine is going to be related to Friedrich's ataxia. Now, this is going to be another trinucleotide repeat. It's going to be the GAA repeat. All of these trinucleotide repeats usually are going to exhibit the genetic inheritance pattern of anticipation. Now, what's anticipation? It is basically as you go on in further generations, each generation, subsequent generation gets the disease earlier and earlier. And that just is a testament of the progression of the trinucleotide repeats. 
Chromosome number 11 is going to be related to Wilms tumor. Now, Wilms tumor is typically going to be seen in a four to six year old child. They're going to be bathing. Mom feels a palpable abdominal mass. Compared to neuroblastoma, this palpable mass is actually not going to cross the midline. So that's important for you to know. Wilms tumor is also going to be related to the WAGAR sequence in which these patients have eye issues, they have GU malformations, growth retardation, as well as intellectual disability. Chromosome 11 is also going to be related to sickle cell disease. Now, sickle cell disease also has multimodal um, involvement or multi-system involvement. The things that I want you to know for your exam are going to be sickle cell patients can be functionally or anatomically asplenic, and so they are going to be predisposed to infections from encapsulated organisms, and that's why the uh, questions can be geared towards making sure that these children are going to get vaccinated with their strep pneumo vaccine, their Neisseria meningitidis vaccine, and their Hib vaccine. Other things to recognize with sickle cell disease patients are that they can get osteomyelitis, which usually presents on your exam as fever plus bone pain, and that osteomyelitis is going to be related to your um, salmonella as the causative agent. Chromosome 13 is going to be related to Patau syndrome. These children are going to have midline defects such as cleft palate. Chromosome 15 is going to be related to prader willi as well as Angelman syndrome. The buzzwords related to this, um, these two uh, pathologies are going to be, in the case of prader willi hyperphagia and obesity. They have a tendency to eat a lot. And Angelman syndrome, they're the happy puppet, so they're going to be very friendly, and that's easy to recognize on your exam questions. Chromosome number 17 is going to be related to neurofibromatosis 1. Now, neurofibromatosis 1 has that classic skin finding of the cafe au lait spots. Neurofibromatosis was also known as von Recklinghausen disease. If you learn how to spell that correctly, that has 17 letters, and so you can think of chromosome 17 and von Recklinghausen as um, uh, your mnemonic. Chromosome 18 is going to be related to Edwards syndrome. Now, Edwards syndrome are patients are going to have those rocker bottom feet and they're going to have the overlapping digits. This is uh, going to kind of round out your trisomies, um, especially after we covered Down syndrome. So the way that I remember these uh, three trisomies is that trisomy 13, at 13 you hit puberty, so P for Patel, P for puberty. At 18 you elect somebody, so E for Edwards, E for election. And at 21 you are going to go down because you're going to start drinking and partying and that's downhill from there, right? So Down syndrome is going to be related to trisomy 21, another multi-system disorder. The key things for you to know with Down syndrome for your exam, number one, they are going to have issues with their heart, specifically endocardial cushion defects. This presents on your exam as patients who have AV valve regurgitation bilaterally, and that's important for you to recognize. Down syndrome patients also are going to be predisposed to early onset Alzheimer's disease. The USMLE loves to go for the mechanism there. And remember, it's three copies of APP. Chromosome 22 is going to be related to neurofibromatosis 2. Remember that you get the bilateral acoustic schwannomas with neurofibromatosis 2. That can be an imaging question in which they actually give you the CT or MRI. It is also going to be related to DeGeorge syndrome. Now remember that DeGeorge syndrome is going to be um, a, a dysgenesis of your third and fourth pharyngeal pouches. Remember that pouches embryologically are going to actually be derived from endoderm. And so patients with DeGeorge syndrome are going to have recurrent infections because they don't have a thymus. That's what the third pharyngeal pouch gives you. And these patients are going to present with hypocalcemia. So one of the manifestations is seizures related to the hypocalcemia. And that's because the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches do give you your parathyroid glands. Finally, we're going to have the X chromosome related to fragile X syndrome, which is going to be um, a common cause of developmental um, delay and intellectual disability, as well as X-linked A gamma globulinemia. These patients are not going to have any B cells, they're not going to have any antibodies, and so they're going to have recurrent bacterial infections. These are all the chromosomes. I hope this was helpful to you, and make sure to tune in for more videos.